I greet you, brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah. It is uh, Monday, the 25th of March. Um, today's our Sabbath day, so taking the day off and just spending some time in the Word. And I uh, decided to do a recording. This is a, this is a video that I've been wanting to do for some time now. And I uh, just never really found the right moment and the right time and I think that the Holy Spirit is just pressing on me now to get it done so uh, so here goes um, I'm going to be talking today about um, the true meaning of the parable of the talents um, in Matthew which is also the, a similar parable that's given to us in Luke Luke 19 where the Lord speaks about the, the pounds or the minas or the money were given to his uh, that were that, that the master gave to his servants and so i want to just spend some time going through those two parables and uh, i hope to be able to shed some light on the true meaning because i've i really believe that it has been widely misinterpreted and misunderstood as to the true meaning um, so you'll see on your screen now i've got a photo of uh, of a coin so this is just a little bit of background information i'm busy working on a project um, a contract uh, where for a guy that bought a house in in the town uh, not too far from us it's a small village uh, it has quite a lot of history it goes back about 100 120 years and uh, when the village was first started it was it was a railway town it was uh, the main station for the area so several houses were erected for the railway workers and over the years the railways have sold this off into private ownership and this guy bought this house it's a very small little house and it's we're guessing it to be somewhere between 100 and 120 years old and the the entire house has got wooden floors uh, it's oregon pine floors but the kitchen area is the floor is particularly bad and uh, it's not really a great uh, floor medium for the kitchen area so he's decided to to take up the floors in the kitchen area only it's a very small little kitchen three by three three meters by three meters i think that's about nine or ten feet by ten feet and uh, so we've we, we're working on this and we're gonna we've taken up the floors and we're gonna fill up the the cavity below the floor and lay a concrete floor and then ultimately tile it so about the beginning of last week we uh, well about Tuesday I think it was we actually started on the project and we while we were lifting the floors we uh, one of my guys found this coin and uh, I couldn't uh, decipher it at that point we had to bring it home and clean it up a bit and then I discovered it was a nine it's a 1952 it's a one pound coin uh, in South Africa our currency is currently the rand I think it was changed in around about 62 or 64 or 1960 somewhere around early mid 1960s yeah we changed currency from the british pound uh, to the south african rand and this goes back to still the days when we were using the pound uh, it was south african currency but in pounds and um so you'll you'll see here this this is a picture of a ship this is apparently i've looked up a bit of the history on this on this coin and uh, this is the dromedaris which is one of the three ships that were was used by uh, a guy by the name of jan van riebeek uh, when, when they came to the cape uh, where cape town is and he's, they set up a, a a refueling or a replenishment station there and uh, so this is a picture of that of that one of the, of the, one of the main, one of those ships, the Dromedaris. Um, so it says here South Africa, that's Afrikaans, for, and then it says um, South Africa in English. On the other side of the coin, we've got a, the depiction of um, George the Sixth. Um, so this is in Latin. Uh, uh, George the Sixth King. The Rex is king, so it's King George the Sixth. So. Uh, I uh, I didn't think much of it at the time, and I shared. Uh, obviously, you know, Chantal and I had some fun digging up the history on this thing, and but she, together with uh, with the girls, uh, decided to to go into a little bit more detail and what the p potential meaning. And they looked at a whole lot of things, and they came to the conclusion 
that uh, it is well this i was only shared with chantal only told me today that they came to the conclusion that this coin uh, was brought into my life and it links into the parable of the talents so i'm kind of getting the message the Holy spirit is really prompting me now saying get on with it get this video done get this teaching done let's let's get it out there so yeah just a bit of fun uh, to share with you on on, on that um, so let's just get right into the word we're going to get into um we start off uh, with this the story of the the minas uh, uh, that's in it's in luke i'm also going to read the parable that's it's similar but there are some significant differences um in matthew but the message is the same or similar and then i'm going to get into the the interpretation of this of this uh of these of this parable so just a quick read through it uh, because i think the content of the other parable is important okay so just bear with me i'm going to start in luke 19 11 and uh, it says as they as i heard these things he added and spoke a parable because he was nigh unto jerusalem and because they thought that the kingdom should immediately appear i actually should highlight that they thought the kingdom should immediately appear and that's actually an important little observation that's what they were thinking at the time he said therefore a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return and he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them occupy till i come but he but his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying we will not have this man to reign over us and it came to pass when he was returned having received the kingdom then he commanded these, these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, so that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound has gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said, Likewise unto him. So in other words, he gave him the same message. Well, thou good servant, uh, be thou over five cities. So he, he, was, he had a, a proportionate reward. Hey? And another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I feared thee, because thou art an Auster in man, thou takest up what thou layest not down, and reapest what thou did not sow. And he said unto him, Out of thy own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up what I, I laid not down, and reaping what I did not sow. Wherefore then gavest not thou money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required my own with usury, in other words, with interest. And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound, and give it to him that hath ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he hath ten pounds. For I say unto you, that unto every one which hath shall be given, and from him that hath not, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. This is a parable that is similar to the Luke, uh, the the one in Matthew 25. Um, so I think before I get into the meaning, I just want to go read read through the the Matthew one so that we understand the difference, and then I'll come back. So Matthew, I think it's 25. Um, the parable of the talents. Okay. I mean, just take note that this is this came this was a parable that the Lord shared immediately after the parable of the ten virgins, and I will come back to that ten virgins now. But let's just deal with the parable of ten. Now, this is Matthew's version. This this parable is not in Mark. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and, and delivered unto them his goods, and unto one he gave five talents. And unto uh, and, and to another two, and to another one, and 
to every man according to his servile ability, so his serving ability, and straightway took his journey. Okay, so we see immediately there's this difference in here in that in, in, in Luke they were each given a pound. They were given equal equal, equal amount. Uh, in this one they are given different amounts according to their ability. Okay. Uh, we, when we read this, we're going to read it also, we're going to interpret it in, in, in context of understanding who the Gospels are speaking to. If what I'm saying in terms of who the Gospels are speaking to is foreign to you, um, you need to understand that the Gospels are written to three specific groups. Luke is written to the bridal group. Mark is written to the sleeping church that will go through tribulation, or at least the seals of tribulation. And Matthew is written to the Jews. And there's a different message um, to each one of these groups. So there's a specific message in the Luke uh, parable to the to the Luke group, and, and we, knew, we need to read that in context thereof. And, but this is now to the Matthew group that will be um, going through not only seals, but also through the time of trumpets in the, during the time of tribulation, the third group. So we see this difference in terms of the, the, that there's different quantities of talents that are given to to, to uh, each of the servants. And so then we can read on, Then he that received the five talents went and traded the same and made them another five talents. And likewise, he that received two, he also gained another two. But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of the servants cameth and reckoned with him. And so he that had received five talents came and bought, brought other five talents, saying to the Lord, Thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have, I have gained beside them five talents more. And his Lord said to him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over few things, and I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. He, al he also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents, and behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. And the Lord said unto me, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, and I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. So we see that both of these two servants had doubled um, what was given to them, so that was a 100% return. But the reward is exactly the same. So there was no differentiation between um, what the two servants had achieved. Then we get on to the third servant, and then, then he which had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, th there thou hast what is thine. And the Lord answered and said, Thou wicked and slothful, thou lazy servant, thou knewest that I reap where I, where I sowed not, and gathered where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money into the to the exchanges, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury, with interest. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which has ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath, and cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay. So we see that they're similar, and the the treat the, the the treatment of the unfaithful or the uh, the wicked, uh, lazy servant is very similar. Uh, what even that what what was what he had left, or even that that was given to him was taken away, and it was given to to those that have. So, before we go into the true understanding, we need to. Just have a look. We, when you, when I did a search, and I've known for some time as well, but I just did a search as well, just to get a broad understanding on what is the typical understanding of uh, an interpretation of these two, of of, of these um, parables. 
and by far the majority and the most widespread interpretation is that the talents here, um, well, first of all, everybody agrees that the talents, the money is not about making more money. Okay, the parable is not about uh, increasing your wealth. All right, so I think that's universally understood that the talents were symbolic and not to be interpreted literal. Okay, the talents or the pounds in, in the case of Luke. But the, by far the, the, the widest spread on interpretation is that the, the talents represent abilities. In other words, uh, lit taken what, in other words, what the Lord has given you in terms of ability, we are to use um, uh, for the furtherance of the kingdom and for the glorification of his name. That's the most widespread interpretation of it. Of the talent. There is also another way, slightly different, where they, where those that have interpreted the talents to be, to be resources, and that we are to use our resources to gain more resources and to use those resources for the furtherance of the kingdom and the glorification of the Lord. Okay, resources is essentially money as well. So, um, money is a resource. So both of those interpretations are clearly wrong because you've got to use the word to interpret the word, and the assumption that the talents mean abilities um, is, is really just that. It's an assumption. There's no foundational, there's no reference to the word. So the, we need to dig a little bit deeper uh, to understand the truth of these parables. Okay. And what I aim to show you is that these talents are, is in fact, uh, the, in the case of uh, Matthew, that the talents is truth and understanding, knowledge and understanding and truth. And the same in in Luke that it's it's about understanding. It's about truths, uh, and and the and, and that truth begets begets truth. So as you gain, as you uh, you, you need truth to 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 grow more truth. The the truth becomes the the, the seed that produces more truth. And I, and I want to show you that from the word. This is not. Um, uh, my personal in interpretation of it I'm going to show you from the word that this is what the Lord meant by the the parable of the talents and the the parable of the pounds in the case of Luke so and and why his disciples would have recognized it immediately when he when he shared this this uh, when he told them this this parable they knew exactly what he was talking about and the key to understand it was in in this statement where for unto everyone um, in in, Matthew, in verse 29 unto everyone that hath shall be given and he shall have abundance but from him that ha hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath and the same statement is also in in Luke 19 we see that um he said, and he said unto them that stood by, take from him the pound and give it to him that has ten pounds. And uh, and it goes on to say, for I say unto you that unto every one which hath shall be given. And from from him that hath not, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. There's the key to understanding. There's also a hint of understanding that this is about truth in the, in the reply of the, the wicked servant the lazy servant that did nothing with it first of all he hid the truth okay and he did not have an understanding of who his master was he had no truth in him he didn't know he 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 he, he what he was he, he, indirectly he was saying that the lord and we know that the master in this parable is about the lord he was saying that the lord is is one that reaps where he did not sow basically calling his lord a thief so he had no understanding of the character and the nature of his master. And there was no truth in him. That's just a hint. That's a little bit more indirect. But the more direct interpretation understanding is this part here in, uh, in verse 26 in Luke 19. And in Matthew uh, 25 uh, verse, 20, uh, verse 29. And I'm going to go and show you that earlier on. Why the disciples were able to recognize it is was earlier on, the Lord had explained what this this meant unto everyone that hath more will be given, and and to those that don't even that which they have will be taken from them. And for that we need to go and go go back to these two places: one in Matthew, 
and one in Luke. And we'll start. Let's start off with the Luke one first. So in Luke eight, if we go to Luke eight, we'll find here that this was now uh, just after the Lord had shared about the parable of the sower, where the sower sows seed, and some seed falls onto hard ground, and and some seed falls into shallow soil, and some seed falls into and gets choked up by the weeds, and then. Um, and we'll, I'm going to have a look in, into that parable because it's very much linked to this parable of the of the of the minas or the parable of the talents. But the um, we, we, so we'll have a look at, at that. Uh, but the key here is understanding here in um, to, to understand this is take heed this this statement here. Take heed therefore how you hear, for uh, who, who, whosoever hath to him shall be given. And, so, and whosoever hath not from him shall be taken even that which he, ha which, he s which he seemeth to have. So there's the statement, there's the link between the two. So let's just go back. And the Lord said um, concerning this matter, he said, No man, when you have lighted a candle, when you have lit the candle, cover it with, in, with a vessel or put it under the bed. He done, in other words, he doesn't hide it. Okay? But, he, but he setteth it on a candlestick that they which enter may see the light. Okay, so he, he puts this, he puts the, the, the candle, this is the light, he puts the light out for everybody to see. This is for the, this is linking into the truth. For nothing is, uh, for, 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 for nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be no, known and come, and, and come abroad, abroad. So there's the link, uh, take you there for how you hear for whoever hath shall more shall more be given. So this is now following. When we just go a little bit further back, we see that after the par after he told them about the parable of the sower, and they didn't understand it. Uh, his disciples asked this question. And you see, in this cha same chapter, he said, and his disciples are saying, "What might this parable be?" And he said unto them, "Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables." that seeing they might not see and hearing they might not understand okay there's no they might not understand there's no perceiving they do not see they do not perceive and they do not understand okay we, okay we all know the 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 parable of this of the seed i'm not going to go read through that that you can read amongst yourself but we know that there were there were instances where it fell by the wayside and was trodden down and the birds came and ate it and stole away okay so sometimes the truth is stolen um, and some fell on hard ground and it withered away because of lack of moisture so eventually some receive the truth but because of lack of depth <coughs> they the truth is taken from them or they or they or it fades into 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 nothing and then of course some of it gets choked out by the 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 things that are in of the world but for those where it falls where the word falls in fertile ground um the, the, it bears much fruit and yeah it, it bear fruit in a hundredfold so it doubled itself we see a very clear link there to the um the parable of matthew where the the one that received five made five more so he doubled and the one that received two made two more so he doubled it hundredfold return and um and then when he had when he uh, when he had said these things he he, he cried <coughs> he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. So he was bringing attention to this particular parable, and then he goes on to say the purpose of parables is so that um, it was given to those to whom it was meant, uh, so that they would perceive and understand. Okay, so and then he explains the 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 seed of the is the is the word, and those by the way uh, those that by the wayside are they that hear. Um, then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. So they they hear, but they don't believe um, the truth. They don't they don't perceive the truth. Um, they on the they then those that fall on the rock. They are uh, the, this is this they are the words which uh, the word of God which when they hear they receive the word with joy, and these have no root. For, for, uh, for a while believe, but in time 
the tempt uh, in, in in time of temptation uh, they fall away so the truth did not fall didn't didn't um, get into deep ground they didn't it's not it's a shallow truth it's a shallow understanding it's a not an in-depth understanding of the truth not an in-depth perception of the truth okay so it's a shallow perception but uh, and then it goes on to say and then of course those that fell on thorny grounds are they are those they which the word which um, when they have heard go forth and are choked of the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring forth no perfection bring no fruit to perfection so there's no increase uh, because the truth is snuffed out by by the things of the world the understanding is uh, confusion is set in and there's no again no clear understanding but that on the the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart having heard the word keep it and bring forth fruit in patience so yes the yes the the servants which received five and and deliver five more and two and two more and or receive a pound and one is able to um, find use that truth to find ten more and another five more but the one that rece receives the truth and buries the truth hides the truth does not share the truth with anybody that's why that's we, we, we when he, when the lord spoke about investing it why why you didn't why didn't you just invest it then i would have gained from the interest that's akin to sharing the truth so that others may may benefit from it and even though they don't the person in himself doesn't have a d in depth understanding of it at least there's a sharing of the the, the truth um, with others so that it can produce fruit through others but no the the wicked servant hides the truth and buries the truth this whole um, understanding is also in in matthew it's a little bit more easy it's a little bit easier to understand in matthew so i'm going to go through the equivalent of this uh, interpretation um, in, in 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 matthew in in relation to this to this parable so for that we have to go to to Matthew 13 and yeah we see again this is the same thing it's just after the parable of the sower um, uh, which is the same parable largely uh, there's no not much difference between this one and the, and the one in in Luke um, and just the there's a common uh, that uh, those this the seed of the word that fell into good ground and brought forth fruit um, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Okay, so there's fruit that's produced from the truth. Truth begets truth. He that who hath ears to hear, let him hear. So here we see again the purpose of the parables. They were asked. The disciples said, "Why speakest thou in parables?" Similar to Luke, and he answered and said, "Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven." But to them it is not given. For whoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that what he has. There is the connection to the parable of the, of the, of the talents that were shared for the disciples later on. So earlier he has already told them that, they, they were, that, they, that to some the mysteries are made, uh, um, are made known they have no knowledge and understanding of these mysteries and of the truths and uh, to them that have more will be given and them that have not um, even th that little bit that's left will be taken away from them here's the connection that's why those talents has got nothing to do absolutely nothing to do with ability it's got everything to do with the truths that you've used to gain more truth to some According to the abilities in Matthew, which is more for the the later group, that by that by that stage, they they will uh, some of them will be given five truths or more truths, but and some of them will gain more, and some will only be given a few truths, but provided that they at least use those few truths that they're given to gain more truths, they will be they will be called a good and faithful servant. So if if we want to be called that good and faithful servant. 
So if we, if we want to be able to be called uh, that good and faithful servant, then we need to understand this, 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 this parable. We need to understand what the talents are. Because there is no other place that the Lord links uh, the reward of being called a good faithful servant to, um, to anything else. Those that that understand the parable that that, that that it's about truth and knowledge and understanding of the mysteries of God, to them you will call good and faithful servant. It's not linked to any any anything else. It's not linked to your abilities. It's not linked to how much wealth you were, able, how much resources you took and 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 were able to increase. It's got nothing to do with those things at all. It's got everything to do with truth knowledge and understanding of his word that's what it's all these things are all linked together okay so and in luke in luke 19 if we want to be called a good servant we need to uh, we need to have built up a, 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 a wealth of truth and understanding of the mysteries of his word that's what it's all about. That's what those are the, the ones that those that dig into the word and get and use the truth to be, get more truth. They're the ones that will be called good and faithful servants. But those that don't and don't even bother sharing the truth with others, so that the interest can produce more fruit, they will be called slothful, lazy, wicked servants. Okay, so we need to be mindful about what we do with the, with the truths that are given us, with the knowledge and understanding that we are given us. We need to get into the Word, we need to understand it, and then we need to share it with others. And we need to use the one to gain more. We've seen that as we gain more truth, we gain more and more understanding. And that's what this parable is all about. So just getting back to Matthew 13, I just want to show you there, that the purpose of the parables here, of course, um, and he said to, and, 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 the, and the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou to them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whoever hath to him shall be given, and he that have shall have more abundance. But, to, but whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that that he hath. And then he goes on to explain the the parable of the of the of the sower. So I think I just want to highlight a few things. So we see that the parable of the sower, which is clearly follows this this thing, we need to understand uh, that it's linked to knowledge and understanding. I'll just read through it. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. He's going to explain. It. And and when anyone uh, heareth the word of the kingdom and understand it not. Then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receiveth the seed by the wayside. But he that receiveth the seed in stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth, receiveth it. Yet hath he no root in himself, but dureth for a while, for when tribulation and persecution ariseth because of the word, and uh, by and by he is offended. And how, how often do we see that? How often do we see that some are offended by the truth? They are unable to perceive the truth. Unable to, there, there's, no, there's, no, there's no depth in them. And when they were faced to the truth, they were offended. And he also that received the seed from among uh, seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke that word, and he becometh unfruitful. He cannot produce. He cannot even invest the truth in others. And he that received the word in in good ground is he that heareth the word and understand it. Which is all, uh, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some hundredfold, and some sixty, and some thirty. So we can see clearly, these things are linked to the understanding, knowledge, and understanding. It's about truth. 
and it's all in this statement here those that have more truth will be given and even those that don't that little bit that they do have or that that, that seeming, seemingly had that will be taken from from them it's interesting to know that the parable of the uh, talents and the and the pounds was not in mark when we go when we go to mark 4 we find that the same parable of the sower is is, is in mark 4 it's very similar I'm not going to go through it, but the end result is, is, is the good ground and it yield fruit and sprang up and increase and brought forth some 30 and some 60 and some 100, okay? And it's also linked to those that hear, let him hear, okay? Those that have ears to hear, let him hear. And then again, he repeats here that the purpose of the parables, I, I want to go through this because it makes it even clearer. And with this, again, we'll see that this link the link will come in so let's just go through the uh, this the par purpose of parables and when he was alone they that were were about him uh, with the with the twelve asked of him the parable and then he said unto them unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God but unto them that are without all these things are done in parables that seeing they may see and not perceive and hearing they may hear and not understand lest at any time they should that they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them and he said unto them know you not this parable and how then will you know all parables okay then he explains it and he said the, okay the sower soweth the word so the seed is the word and <clears throat> so we see that the interpretation is similar these are they by the wayside where the word is sown but when they have heard satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts and these are, are they likewise which are sown on stony ground who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves and so endure but for a time afterward when affliction persecution ariseth for the for the word's sake immediately they are offended so there's no depth and depth of understanding so in other words these are easy, easily deceived also by the their things of the world there's no depth there's no root um, and these are and these are they which are sown among thorns, um, such as hear the word, <clears throat> and the curse of this world, and the, sorry, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches and lusts of other things, entering in choke the word, and it become unfruitful, and just like the <clears throat> the wicked servant, that was that was unfruitful, in what he was given. And these are they which, uh, and these are they which sow on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and and some a hundred. So we see that the the interpretation of the parable is is similar, and it's linked to understanding. And let's just go. And they said unto, and then he said unto them, uh, is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed? And not to be set on a candlestick. In other words, the light is 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 what is, um, is the candle to be hidden? Is the light, uh, the truth, to be hidden? For there is nothing hid, which shall not be manifested. Neither was there anything kept secret, but that it should come aboard abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto him, Take heed, what ye hear with what measure you 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 meet it shall be measured to you and unto you that here shall more be given for he that hath to him shall be given and he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he hath So here we have a very clear link to the same thing, to those that are have, to those that hear, to those that take heed of what they hear. And those that, uh, that, that there's, a, there's, a, there's a degree of measure to, 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 uh, with what you, you, what you measure out, it will be measured unto you. So as you share the truth, as you invest the truth, as you use the truth to gain more truth, more will be, and unto you that hear, more will be given. Those that have will be given more. Those that have truth in them 
that have understanding, that have understanding of God, of the mysteries of the word. Some mysteries are easily understood. Some mysteries are far more difficult. Some you will never understand without having the, the basic truths in place. So as you acquire more truth, you, you have a foundation on which to uh, acquire more truths. Truth begets truth. Truth is the seed. And as you plant the seed, it generates and produces more fruit, more seed of the same kind. That is what the true meaning of this parable is all about. We need to be mindful about the truths that are given to us. We need to test them. We need to dig deeper into the word. We need to, and as we, as we, as we build a clearer understanding and as we stand firm, we, that, that truth cannot be taken from you. Somebody else can come with another idea, but because you've dug in deep and you understand the truth to, 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 to the fullness, it can't be taken away from you. It's well rooted. It can't be taken because you, you just reject the, the, the lie. You reject the untruth because you have a deeper understanding of the truth. That's why we need to get into it. We need to dig deeper. And so they can produce fruit. So I think I, I think that this is a demonstration that the true meaning of the talents and the minas, the pounds that were given to his to, to his servants, is truth and understanding, so that we can understand the mysteries of the Word of God. So now I just want to get into. Uh, The, par the parable of the virgins I want to show you that this is linked that they are linked to the same concept because this is another parable that has been largely misunderstood greatly misunderstood of what the oil is so I'm just going to read through it Matthew, it's only in Matthew it's related to that final group but it's good to understand it for them and for us Matthew 25 1 then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took up their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil with their vessels, with their lamps. And while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there not be enough for us and you. Go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. And afterwards came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch ye therefore, for ye know, not, know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. So this parable has largely been interpreted with the understanding that the oil is the Holy Spirit. That those that are filled with the Holy Spirit will be able to endure and will be able to enter into the kingdom. And those without or they do not have enough anointing will not be able to make it in. That is by far the, the, the greatest understanding, the most widespread understanding. I want to put it to you that this oil has got absolutely nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. It is not. The oil is knowledge and understanding. That is what it really is. Because you cannot buy the Holy Spirit. You cannot buy the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a gift. It's a promise. It's a, he's, 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 our, uh, he's, he's our wedding ring, which is the promise of things to come. That the Lord left with us so that we would know that He will return and come and fetch us again. It's got nothing to do with the oil. So when you understand that the oil is knowledge and understanding, of the word and you read this parable again you'll understand that they are wise why would the why would the the wise virgins virgins wise because they had knowledge and understanding the foolish had no understanding no truth in them they were foolies they were fools no no they, they had no oil no understanding 
So those that took with them uh, had, that had understanding and they all slumbered. They, was, they, they all fell asleep. They were all guilty of the same thing there was. But when, when, time, when the crunch came, when the time when the bridegroom arrived, then those that had knowledge and understanding, they, they were able to just make a few adjustments and trim their lamps and they were ready. To, they were ready. They were considered ready. But those that had no understanding, he didn't understand what was going on, and they said, "Give us, give us understanding. Give us some of your oil. Give us knowledge and understanding. Of what is this all about?" And they said, "Hang on, sorry, we haven't got time. You need to go and buy. It takes time and effort to gain knowledge and understanding. It costs money to get knowledge and understanding. You've got to put effort in to go and get it." And that's why they had to go and buy from those that sell. It took time. And by the time that they had the understanding, it was too late. That is the real meaning of the, 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 the oil in the parable of the ten virgins. And we see that how that is linked to the talents. Immediately after, the Lord speaks to them about the talents, the parable of the talents. Okay. And I hope this teaching blesses you and that uh, you will to take this forward amen may the lord bless you and keep you until next one farewell